So this question is a simultaneous equation that we have and we're told to find the value of a and b and we are supposed to use matrices. Okay, so you can use Kramer's rule to solve this one. Um, it's possible, but there is another way to do it. This is where you find the inverse of a matrix. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, first thing you need to do, just like with Kramer's rule, you need to have all your variables on one side, and on the other side you have your constants. So the first equation is already like that. You can see all my variables A and B on that side, but in the second equation I have some variables on the other side. So what I will do is collect them. Now, this one here is a fraction. Uh, the denominator is A, so I can break it up so that I have only uh, well, I have two separate fractions, rather. And if I do that, I will have 6 over a minus 1 over b. This is equals to a over a plus 4 over a. Okay? And we know that a over a is just equal to 1. Okay? So, this uh, 4 over a, I could bring it over to the other side and then rewrite this equation is um, this is 2 over a minus 1 over b and this is equal to 1. So these are the two equations that I essentially have. So it's those two over there. Okay, and I have to solve them. Now to do that, all I have to do is uh, write it in matrix form. Then I label my matrices a, x, and b. Find the inverse of matrix a and then uh, multiply that on both sides. So here, uh, it might be uh, tempting to try and rewrite these equations where you have a, in, a and b in the numerator. You don't have to do that. Your variable can be 1 over b. If you know what 1 over b is, finding b is not difficult at all. So to do that, um, what I will do is I will rewrite this one as 2 multiplied by 1 over a plus 3 multiplied by 1 over b and then this is equal to 13 and then this one over here I can rewrite it as 2 multiplied by 1 over a minus uh, 1 times 1 over b the 1 is not really necessary but there it is okay so I can rewrite them like that and then you can see that my uh, variables are 1 over a and 1 over b, then I write it in matrix form. Now remember in matrix form, I have a matrix of my coefficients. So it's 2, it's 3, it's 2 again, and then it's minus 1. So all these coefficients, and notice this is the column of x, that is the column of y. All these are variables of x, oh sorry, 1 over a, and these did a and b, a, uh, x and y rather. And then those are the variables of uh, the coefficients of 1 over b. So I have 2 and 2, which are my variables of 1 over a, and 3 and minus 3. And here I would multiply this by 1 over a. This is the first one, so it's this times that. And then this one would multiply 1 over b. And this is all equal to my constants over there. Okay, and this makes sense because I have a 2 by 2 matrix. This is a 2 by 1 matrix. If I draw my rectangle over here, the numbers inside the rectangle are the same. So matrix multiplication between those two is possible. And my solution should be a 2 by 1 matrix. And you can see this is a 2 by 1 matrix. So I've written it correctly. Any other order, if I put this one on that side, matrix multiplication would not even be possible. Okay. So now that I have that... Uh, Remember what I need to do is find the inverse of this matrix. Now remember the inverse of a matrix is a matrix that when I multiply it with the original matrix, I get the identity matrix. Now the identity matrix is just a diagonal matrix with ones on the leading diagonal. Now finding the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix is very simple. There are a few steps that you have to follow. With bigger matrices, um, there's 
it, it's not the same procedure of just switching elements and changing the signs and something like that. So it's a little bit more complicated. But for a two by two matrix, um, not much to do. Okay, so now that I have my matrices, I'm just gonna make some space um, and find the inverse. So here I've written, this is my matrix A, that is my matrix X for my variables, and this is B. So I have A times X is equal to B. Now what I need to do is find the matrix A inverse, and when I multiply A and A inverse, I get the identity, and what I do on one side, I should do on the other side. Now I'm going to multiply A inverse over here. So I'll put A inverse over there. I do not put it on this side, because if you remember, matrix multiplication is not commutative. Commutative just means the order you put them in matters. Because with numbers, when I'm, multiplied, when I'm multiplied, multiplying them, I say 2 times 3, I get 6, and then I say 3 times 2, I still get 6. So it doesn't matter whether 2 came first or 3 did, the answer was still the same. But with matrices, if I have A inverse times B, and I compare that with B inverse times A, if the multiplication isn't even possible, most of the time the answer you get will not be the same. Okay, <clears throat> so I need to find this A inverse. And if you remember, A inverse, uh, we say we need to get the determinant of matrix A. So determinant of A for a two by two matrix, uh, very simple to do. You find the product on the leading diagonal minus the product on the minor diagonal. So I will say um, two times minus one. So it's two times minus one. And then I subtract the product on the minor diagonal, which is two times three. You can check that on your calculator, but you shouldn't need your calculator for this. This is minus two minus six. Minus two minus six is equal to minus eight. So that is my determinant. So I know my matrix has an inverse because this determinant is not equal to zero. So your determinant determines if your matrix has an inverse or not. If the determinant is zero, then no inverse. If your determinant is anything else except zero, then it has an inverse. And this determinant, I will use it to work out um, A inverse. So this is the formula. So I say one over my determinant. So it's one over negative eight. And then I multiply that by a matrix that I'm going to put over here. Now this matrix, I derive it from A. Now to do that, on the leading diagonal, I interchange the elements. So I put minus one here and I put two there. So you can see this minus one is on top. In A, it was below. Minus two is there at the bottom. Now there it was at the top. Okay, and then with these ones on the minor diagonal, I multiply them by minus one. So it's three times minus one, it's negative three. Two times negative one is negative two. Now when I multiply the scalar, with this matrix, what I will have is my A inverse. Okay, so there it is. All we have to do is multiply um, the scalar inside. Just multiply every term in there. Okay, and when we do that, this is what we get. Negative and negative gives me a positive 1 over 8 negative and negative this is positive 3 over 8 and then negative and negative again this is positive so i'll just write this one as positive 2 over 8 you can go ahead and simplify it but they're exactly equal so there's nothing wrong with that and then negative and positive this one gives me negative 2 over 8. okay so now that i have the inverse of the matrix what I will do is I will multiply it by bx on the left and also by, um, sorry, I'll multiply it by ax on the left hand side and also by b on the right hand side of the equal to sign but on the left of b. So this is what I will have. A inverse will go over here. I will have 1 over 8. 3 over 8, uh, 2 over 8, and then minus 2 over 8. And then my matrix A, it's 
two, three, uh, two, and minus one. My x matrix, which is just the matrix of coefficients, I have one over a and one over b. And then doing the same thing on the other side, I have a inverse, so it's one over eight, three over eight, two over eight, and negative two over eight. And then this is multiplied by the solution matrix or the constant matrix, which is 13 and one over there. Okay. So I did the same thing on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. I multiplied A inverse on both sides and I put A inverse on the left. And I did the same thing over there, again, because uh, matrix multiplication is not commutative. So what I will do is I will multiply these two together and then see what we get. Um, it should be the identity if we've done the finding up the inverse correctly. And you know how we multiply? It is row times a column. So, doing that, I'll have 1 over 8 times 2. It's 2 over 8. And then I have 3 over 8 times 2. This is 6 over 8. That was first row, first column. Then I move to this element over here, which is first row, second column. So I have 3 over 8, which is 1 over 8 times 3. Then I have 3 over 8 times negative 1, which is negative 3 over 8. Then same thing in the second row, first column. So the second row, first column, I have 2 over 8 times 2. This is 4 over 8. So again, you can simplify them, but I prefer not to. Um, this negative 2 over 8 uh, times 2, this is negative 4 over 8. And then second row, second column, second row, second column, I have 6 over 8. So that's 2 over 8 times 3. And then negative and negative will give me a positive 2 over 8. Okay, so I've multiplied these two. I'm still left with this 1 over A and 1 over B. These are my variables. And then on this side, I should also go ahead and multiply. We multiply the row with the column. I didn't mention it, but I do know that they are compatible because it's a two by two, this is a two by one. When I draw my rectangle, twos will be inside the rectangle, so they are compatible to be multiplied. So I'm doing the same thing. I multiply row with a column. So I will have a one over eight times 13. This is just 13 over eight and then three over eight times one. This is just three over eight. Then the second element here, two over eight times 13, this is 26 over eight. And then negative uh, two over eight times one, this is just negative two over eight. Okay, so I've multiplied my two matrices. Then from here, move over there. So if I look at this, I have 2 over 8 plus 6 over 8, that's 8 over 8, which is just 1. And then here I have 3 over 8 minus 3 over 8, that is 0. 4 over 8 minus 4 over 8 is 0. And then 6 over 8 plus 2 over 8, that's 8 over 8, which is equal to 1. And I still need to multiply by this 1 over A, 1 over B, and this should be equal to this matrix here. Okay, now this one here, I have um, 13 over eight plus three over eight. That should be 16 over eight, which is two. So I should just go ahead and write the two. So that is two. Okay, and this one here, six, eight, 26 rather, 26 over eight minus two over eight. That is 24 over 8. 24 over 8 is equal to 3. So this is what I have over there. Okay, now this is the identity matrix. Um, what happens to a matrix when you multiply by the identity matrix is that the matrix actually stays the same. But we can check and see if that is true. So I'll just make some space over here. Let's see if that is indeed the case. Okay, so this is what we have here. 
then I continue over there so I just multiply do the same thing when multiplying a row with a column so it's 1 times 1 over a this should give me 1 over a and then I have 0 times 1 over b I add that so that gives me 0 because 0 multiplied by anything gives me 0 and then I have the second row uh, times the first column that should give me the element in the second row first column so 0 times 1 over a this is 0 and then I have 1 times 1 over b this is just 1 over b and then this is still equal to this one over here so this part here is this multiplication over here so this is a 2 by 2 matrix this is a 2 by 1 matrix they are compatible and you can see my solution is a 2 by 1 matrix they are 2 by 1 and this is equal to 2 and 3 there so I'll just simplify this one here so I have 1 over A and 1 over B because 1 over A plus 0 is just 1 over A and 0 plus 1 over B is just 1 over B and this is all equal to 2 and 3 now these two matrices are equal remember matrices are equal if and only if they have the same order this is a 2 by 1, this is a 2 by 1, so the first condition or the first criteria is met. And then the second one is when a corresponding elements are equal. So it means that 1 over A is equal to 2, which implies that A is equal to a half. And 1 over B is equal to 3, which implies that B is equal to 1 over 3. Okay, so these are our solutions. A is equal to a half and B is equal to one third. Okay, so when you've got your solutions, you can always check them on your calculator, see if they are correct. Remember the original equations, two over A plus three over B. This is equal to 13. So we can try that on our calculator. Then instead of A and B here, I will have half and for B I will have a third okay so 2 divided by a half is 4 and then 3 divided by a third is 9 okay then I have 4 plus 9 this is equal to 13 so my first equation is satisfied by A being half and B being one third. Then you also need to try it in the second equation. The second equation said six over a minus one over b is equal to a plus four over a. Okay, so again we will substitute the values of a and b. A here is half, so I put half, so it's six divided by half and b is what is b b is one third so i have one third one third there and this a is half and that one is half so i have half here and i have half there okay six divided by half is 12. okay and then one divided by a third is three so i have 12 minus 3, this is equal to 9. And then over here, I have uh, half plus 4. This is just 4 and a half. And then 4 and a half divided by a half, this is equal to 9. So you can see my left-hand side and my right-hand side are equal. So my values of A being half and B being uh, one-third satisfy both equations. So I have solved this um, pair of simultaneous equations by using matrices and finding the inverse. Now you can also do this with Kramer's rule. I made a video on that that you can watch and try and solve it using Kramer's rule and then see if you get the same answer. You should get the same answer.